Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update. And as I said in yesterday's episode, we were, we were very very short on rare metals at the at the beginning of the last stream. So top absolute top of the list, top priority for getting that things up and working a bit better was to come in down here and, and put, throw in a quick what we'll call a quick botch in here in order to get the product productivity up a bit higher and get a bit more rare metal flowing through. So in order to get that going, I think I went through all of these um, these chemical plants that are turning the raw rare metals that's pouring out of here from the uh, from the core mining in, into the into the enriched stuff and uh, put in some uh, and upgraded the tiers of productivity modules and speed modules. And there's quite a nice balance in here because the productivity modules of any given tier have a Re re knock down the speed by half as much as a speed module of the same tier it increases it by. So if you have three slots in a machine like this, you can keep the machine running at exactly the same speed, but with a slightly higher productivity by putting in two productivity modules and a speed module of the same number. So as you can see over there on the right, it's still running at a crafting speed of one, but we're now getting a 15% productivity boost. So there's the same amount of stuff going in, it can deal with the same amount of input, it takes the same amount of time to, to run a single job, but each job produces an extra 15% of output. So we've got 15% we've got more enriched rare metal coming up here and going into this store box here, up the top here. Then up here, well, these, these furnaces don't have room to put in multiple, um, three modules into them. So I've put, just put productivity modules in there because that's the most important thing here. But there is room now to put in also put in these beacons. And these are only tier 2 speed modules, but if we look at the numbers over here, you can see that we're getting a 15% productivity boost from those productivity modules. And the crafting speed is actually plus 80%, so it's running significantly more quickly than it would normally. And that's because there's the, the sheer number of modules in here. Effectively, we've got four tier 2 speed modules affecting these machines because a beacon will only push 50% of the effect of the, of, the be of the modules in it out to the machines around it. But having all of these tier 2 modules in here, each one of those is giving a 30% boost to the speed. These are giving a 20% reduction, so, e so that is easily capable of more than compensating for that. And so that's why most of these furnaces aren't running. I might have gone a little bit over the top, o o over what was necessary. Now what we would have liked to have done, or what I would have liked to have done if I could, would, be would have been to put in speed beacons down here as well, in which case I'd have been able to put productivity modules all the way through all of these. So three productivity modules in each one, and then instead of, get instead of only getting a, a productivity boost of 8% from each one, and a which seems, for some reason, 8 plus 8 appears to be plus 15. I don't quite understand how that maths works, but never mind. Maybe they're actually plus 7.5 and, and there's some rounding going on in that. I don't know. But it would have been nice to be able to put in a third productivity module in there and get it up to 22, 23%, something like that. And then put some beacons in around here to get the speed back up again. The problem is, with all of these pipes, there isn't room because all of the beacons are 3x3, three three, or at least the basic beacons are 3x3. Three three. So I can't put it there because the uh, hydrogen chloride pipe is in the way. I can't put it there because the water... And I can't put it, I can't put it there because the d dirty water pipes are in the way. I can't put it there because then there wouldn't be anywhere to put the inserters. So unfortunately, there's no, there isn't without doing a massive redesign of this area, there isn't room to put in the uh, put in any any beacons to speed these up further. Looking at it at, at the moment, actually, I do notice that the raw rare metal is only getting about two thirds of the way up here. So we could risk, we could potentially go in and risk losing. We'd lose quite a lot of speed there. We'd lose forty percent from here, and then we'd lose another. 20% from here. Um, so I think putting in, taking this all the way up to just productivity modules would not be worthwhile. Um, especially as the, the input supply over here seems to be a little bit varied. Sometimes there's enough coming in that we um, that this, this starts to accumulate a little bit. Sometimes there isn't. So yeah, I, I think this is probably the right balance. And because this is only a temporary improvement, we're going to build a new, um, proper, decent third generation, fourth generation. I I've lost count of the generations. Um, <laughs> processing facility at some point in the future. I think this is this is okay for now. And if we have a look at the product production graphs for uh, rare metals, we can look at this. And if we look back over the last ten hours, we can see this. I think this here, yeah, when we we're producing about two and a half thousand per minute. This is what we we're managing before I did the upgrades. Now it's wibbling up and down around about 3.2 thousand per minute, which feels about right. Um, that feels like about the sort of boost we were, I was expecting. And the good news is that if we follow this this trail around here, it's flowing into here. Okay, and uh, all right, right now there seems to be yeah, there's there's quite a lot flowing down this this belt here. Yes, and the and the delivery cannons are going, but they are being kept satisfied by the uh, by the stream of rare metals coming out here. And Oh, these have been tweaked to say only output is more than 50. Okay, so we're actually, now we're starting to starve the train system, which is a little bit of a concern. Um, we probably don't really want to do that because 
the uh, the rare metals being turned into very very important things like blue circuits and um, memory card substrates. So we do need, we do want to keep this working. Um, as you can see, it, this has now there we go. That's this is now starting to back up a little bit. So the rare metals are starting to pull, pull pull through here. It's yeah. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say we should prioritize this, but it does seem to, it does seem that we have a decent quantity of rare metals available, and so it's. It's able to flow both into the into the station, load the train up, and flow out here to keep the guns happy. So, this I think is a very very temporary system. And I know there's the always the joke about a temporary. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary system. But this does seem to be working quite nicely. We are getting we are getting in just about enough rare metals through for right now. It's not going to last. Soon we'll, 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 we will be upgrading everything and trying to produce a lot more of it. well everything. But for right now. We do seem to be okay for rare metals, so that's that's nice. This this little nudge in here has improved things. I also had to upgrade the uh, the belts across here to red belts to make sure there's enough. No, sorry, across here to red belts to make sure there's enough to pull out all of the uh, all of the raw rare metals that's coming in from core mining. One of the other things I'd quite like to do, I think, is perhaps consider upgrading all of these core miners to tier three productivity modules, and that should be fairly easy. It's just a case of going into the module ins uh, inserter over here, saying, well, I want to, I want to upgrade my pulverizers. That's that one and I want to put tier 3 productivity modules in everything, <clears throat> then I can just drag the module inserter across the whole thing like this. That's a lot. It's going to be a lot of, of modules. 168, oh no, 168 machines at four modules each. That's getting on for 600 modules. Okay. Well, I've just put in a request. Oh, it seems, seems we, we might actually have those available. Um, yeah, so those are, going, those are now going to be upgraded. That'll bring these from running at 23% um, productivity to about 30% productivity. So there's going to be quite a boost from that. Core fragments are actually backing up a little bit at the moment. That's um, interesting and slightly concerning. We, it's, it's not become a problem yet, but we do seem to be struggling to get through all of the core fragments that are coming in from, on some of these. And this is just going to make it worse because we're going to go from a reduction in speed of 60% to a reduction in speed of 80%. Uh, we should probably put in some beacons for these as well, really. Um, and that, that would save us enorm save enormously on the number of uh, modules we'd use as well. I've discussed that in, in the past, how how, uh, how you use putting in more modules in beacons can actually save you quite a lot of modules, so I won't do it again. But I think at some point in the future it might be worth it. Um, and there's plenty of room down here to put in the beacons along here, because we can put one... Oh, there's not quite room, okay. Uh, a redesign might be required, and we probably want to do it around wide area beacons as well, because with these we could... Potentially, if we redesign it properly, yeah, like we have over here, if we replace one of the one one pulverizer here with a beacon, that beacon can then reach out to that's 14 pulverizers. So that, that's going to be really, really efficient. And you can put more speed modules in a wide area beacon. So I think a redesign of this area would also be a good idea to um, to allow us to start using the ludicrously good wide area beacons. Now that will mean we'll start having to make the wide area beacons. That is another thing we will need to do. But that shouldn't be too hard, and we've got trains to bring them all down now, and we can then start going up to... Maybe, maybe we can then think about using Tier 4 modules, and that'll be even, even better. And then we can have even more stuff flowing out of here, hopefully. At least that's that's that, that's the plan with that. So the reason I was doing all of this stuff with the rare metals was because, yeah, we, 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 we were short of it. We didn't, have, we didn't have enough. Simple as that. But it was specifically, it was Taras that was the, um, was the, was the place that was, that was struggling. So if we look out here on Taras, we can see that now, after that upgrade... We now have a plentiful supply of rare metals along here. It's, it's coming into the... Um, it is being used up at a fair rate, sure, but then that's what resources are for. The point is, as long as we're able to bring the resources in at the same rate we're using them up at, then everything like that, then everything will be absolutely fine. And it can run up here into the Immersion Plate construction area. And now, as you can see, all of the... Well, I was going to say all of these machines are, are blazing away nicely. They actually don't seem to be. Is that because we've satisfied requirement? Yes, we yes we have. We've got the yeah we've got enough immersion plate. Now I think some side balancing on this belt would be a good idea because we do. All well, that said, this belt is completely full. The machines down this side are capable of satisfying it. It's just they're all trying to push onto one side of the belt. But I guess that's actually okay. Anyway, yes. So we've got we now have a full full satis, fully satisfied belt of immersion plate coming over to here, being loaded into this machine that's firing at Norvis, and and so that means we now have all of the immersion plate we need over here. But the main reason we've managed to, to produce this much immersium 
is because we've run out of cryonite, which is the which is the other thing you need to make these um, make these aeroframe scaffolds. So because we don't have any cryonite, we're not using up the immersion plate, and so it's been able to catch up. If we had a ready supply of cryonite coming in, I don't know if things would be quite so good. But as I touched on in the last episode, uh, we need to wait for Tristan to get a snowdrop up and running f uh, properly. And for some reason, there is a signal in the middle of there. I have no idea what that's doing there. Not very much is the obvious answer. But yes, that's a little bit odd. So once Tristan gets snowdrop up and running, we should have a good supply of, cry of cryonite coming in here. Um, potentially not even by delivery cannon. We may have it coming in by uh, by space by, by train at that point if we uh, if we manage to get the um, the spaceships up and running. We shall see. And if so, then we'll get we get then everything around here is going to be then we can get this running much much more effectively. We'll start producing these aeroframe scaffolds and we'll have a ready supply of them. And then hopefully we can start making the low density structures from them as well. There's a lot of things required for this. This, this, this was a very, very ambitious build when I when I made it because we didn't have any of the resources we needed. We also ran into a problem up in space where we didn't have enough lubricant, and that was very unfortunate and caused all kinds of chafing. I mean, I mean, supply shortages. So. Uh, we had actually we had two of us come in to start fixing this. Uh, somebody who was it? Was it? Um, it was apparently me. That's interesting because it wasn't me. <laughs> somebody came in. I'm going. I'm going to. Yeah, I, I don't know who it was. Somebody came in and put in the put in these beacons here to to to, to beacon everything around here. I'm going to suspect it was it was probably either Mark or Tristan because Mike was busy. But one of them came in and put these beacons in in order to speed up the uh, speed up the production. And at the same time they were doing that, I went, hey, let's put in some more machines. So I put these in here, and we now have far more lubricant production than we need. This is going to last us for quite a while I think but you know I think it's probably good to, ha to have it a little bit over spec than to have it under spec and so this is going to run very very nicely and keep us supplied with all of the lube we could possibly want that as is before as it's flowing up here going into the station which is very very full and flowing down down here probably Yes, and then being shipped up in, up, to, up into Norbit by a delivery cannon here. Uh, so, yeah, we are, I mean, the thing is, we are getting through a certain amount of this loop. If we look at this cannon, it is, um, actually, no, this, take it back, this, it, it has stopped for the time being. But we are churning through quite a bit of it. So, 19,500 um, barrels worth of it, apparently, so far. Um, so, yeah, we're getting through a fair amount of this over here. We need a good supply of it. We've increased the supply further than was strictly necessary, but that's what Factorio is all about. Speaking of the aeroframes, which I was doing a moment ago before I got distracted by the by the idea of some lube, um, I've also put in a station over here for aeroframe drop-off. So this is going to drop them off onto the onto the bus here, with the usual sort of shenaniganry with a warehouse, pour them down the bus, they go all the way along here, and the idea of this was so that we could have some, at least some of them, oh, here we go, here's some of them in fact, some of them could be put into the into the generic standard rocket up here, um, and then lo loaded up, taken up into um, in, in up to Norbit, and then I'd be able to take some of them over in order to make the uh, Astro Science Three, which is going to need, as, as we discussed, a fair quantity of these things. And I don't really want to make them on site when I can make them on Norvis for somewhat cheaper. So. We're going to be shipping them up by rocket. I'm going to grab a big handful of them, take them over, and make them in, and make them into science uh, from from there. And as part of that, I was also able up in Norbit, Norbit. I was able to remove the machine that was in somewhere up here. I think it was it was in somewhere up here, turning aeroframe rods into aeroframe scaffolds. So I just so now they're just going to be brought straight up the bus and dropped onto onto here. Now the rocket of the, with with them in doesn't seem to have flown up yet, so we don't actually have any yet. But I've done the normal sort of down here. We've got we've got them being uh, passed down to here and then filtered out and, and along this belt. And hopefully I've remembered. I haven't remembered to put in the uh, the the, um, the, 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 the the filter on here. So we need to put that in and minus million or so. Or, yeah, or so so they don't get just passed down into these lower ones. Um, I've also put in an additional set of inserters down here. The idea being that these will uh, allow us to because these 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 warehouses, the bottom warehouses, are getting a little bit full. These are supposed to be the ones that take the sort of the the miscellaneous overflow stuff that's needed for building or is or or shame and just put it and, and keep it out of the way of all the ones that are filling up the bus. So looks like I still need to still need to hook this one up, and that means I need to put in a green cable. You get to watch this in action. If I put a green cable in across there, then suddenly. We're starting to pass through all of the miscellaneous stuff that was accumulated in in this in this warehouse uh, down into down into this into this warehouse, and that means we can start pulling out all the bits and pieces of um, again miscellania out of these warehouses because this one is presum well, presumably was completely full. And in here, we don't we don't want to have things like um, aeroframe scaff uh, sorry space platform scaffold. We don't want um, solar panels. We want them down in the miscellaneous ones because this will just get in the way of everything we're trying to supply onto the bus here. So, and um, as you can see, this one was this. One, there we go. Oh, oh, now there we go. Because I've done that, we've now got a, a little burst of processors flowing down the bus here. Um, 
I don't know what they're. Oh, they're needed for uh, for one of for Tristan's supercomputers up there. So you see, this is this is it was clogged up because we didn't have enough warehouses going on down here, and this is this is sorting that out nicely, and we're able to then bring through. An enormous quantity of storage stuff, some inserters. We don't really care about exactly what's in these warehouses, as long as it's always as long as it's all available and that and there for us to use. It doesn't really matter. We just want to keep it. Um, we just want to keep these ones up here flowing nicely. Tristan has faffed around a little bit with uh, some minor admin. He's, he's stolen some of the solar panels from the array to take over to Snowdrop to kickstart his um, nuclear plant because you need a you need a little bit of electricity to get the water out of the lakes first to get your nuclear power plant up and started. Um, and he set up a glass uh, a glass delivery cannon to fire at the streams area over here in order to allow in order to allow making the mirrors. So there's glass coming in here as well because I think beforehand it was just coming from some of the exoplanets and so they they had a tendency to sort of to, to run out a little bit. So if he's bringing it in from other places as well, uh, from Norv Norvis specifically, where there is in theory always an unlimited supply of glass. That's not true, but you know, in theory, um, <clears throat> then they shouldn't ever run out, and you should always be able to make the mirrors. And that's a good thing because I'm going to start stealing more of these in order to make my um, my gamma ray detectors down here uh, somewhere that I was talking about uh, yesterday. Finally, on down on Norvis, we have um, Mark, has, Mark has built up a new stone processing area. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, uh, yes, down here to the south. So what this is doing is he's bringing in um, he's bringing in stone in suitable quantities, and probably a few, possibly a few other things as well. That stone is then, be, in theory, this is then turned. This is supposed to be a replacement for the old stone processing area, um, at least for some of the resources we need. So we've got we've got this area we we have or had and still do have this area over here that brings in massive quantities of stone a lot of which comes from the um, comes from the core mining so we have lots and lots of stone available here we we'll turn then we're turning that into sand in order to make um, the what do we call it uh, hydrogen chloride uh, in order to do the, the rare metal processing we're also making it into quartz to make silicon and we're making it into glass so all of those sort of things are happening over here the new area has now taken over for supplying stone bricks because that is another major draw on the stone supply. So as you can see, we've got some heavily moduled areas around here. With uh, we, this has been built to the the new standards where you stick in a beacon in the middle and 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 uh, use tier three modules and everything and productivity and speed just to get the absolute maximum you can out of it. I say absolute maximum you can. He hasn't upgraded to um, the bigger furnaces, the the industrial furnaces or even the advanced furnaces that you get from Crastorio. Um, but he's got but he's gone for the he's gone for something at least at least a little bit bigger. And then this is, as you can see, this is providing a, a nice healthy supply of stone bricks that can be fed down into, into a station here and, and taken away as required by trains. Those stone bricks can also be turned into concrete. So there's some more stone coming in here and apparently the recipe for concrete is, um, is bricks and sand and also some iron sticks. So it's, it seems to be rebar reinforced concrete and some water as well. So we're making decent quantities of concrete and that's being made available in, an, in another station over here. And uh, presumably, we've presumably got some. Yes, we've got some iron coming in as well. Although that's uh, that's that's less exciting. That's a, a, sorry, iron iron coming in. That's less exciting. That's just a drop off station. Then we're then feeding that concrete down over here, along with the iron, in order to make refined concrete, which you'll remember I needed for the space elevator, and I had to make that sort of on site on up in um, up in space. Apparently, you can't um, productivity module these. At least I assume that's why he hasn't put productivity modules in them. But you can productivity the girders that go in there. So looking at this, we put iron re we put we 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 bring in stone we t and we we cook the stone into bricks. We also crush it into sand. We combine the we combine the two forms of stone with some iron rebar in order to make the concrete. We then combine the concrete with the iron rebar in it with some iron girders uh, or beams as they're called to make the refined concrete. So there's quite a lot of iron in it by that point. Um, and then all that gets passed down here. Where we then combine it with steel girders in order to make the dark and light. So what are these? What are these actually called? Uh, light reinforced plates and dark or black reinforced plates. Um, I don't know what these are really for. I mean, they're they're different types of flooring. Um, Mark has demonstrated the different types of flooring over here with stone bricks. This is concrete. This is refined concrete. This is light plates and this is dark plates. So we've got a, a little demonstration down here of what what the various different floorings look like. I think this probably means that Mark is about to try and um, uh, carpet the entire base with probably concrete or refined concrete. Who knows? He's probably going to try and carpet it with something, and that's and, and I'm going to go. Oh no! Do we have enough stone for that? And to be fair, the stone does seem to be flowing in reasonably freely. Um, I'm slightly concerned that we don't have enough of it because we have had serious problems with stone supply in the past. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. If if we do run out, then we can then we'll we'll, we'll just tell uh, tell Mark that he has to go out and uh, and, and and put out a, an outpost on um, Andrew Gun 
because that is a stone planet, and so he can go out there and dig up core fragments and make make stone bricks and concrete to his um, <laughs> to his to, to his heart's content. And he can also make vitamin land out there if he really wants as well. Yeah, there we go. The stone is all gone again already. There's probably another train on its way in. Yes, there is. Oh, and one of the trains has run out of fuel. Even better. So moving away from Norvis for a little while, let's head off to off off to uh, Big Red because Mark has been doing things over here as well. Uh, where is where is everything that goes on here? So I, apparently, what he's been doing is producing. He's been producing the. Um, so previously, we had the. Um, we have the. Ooh, there's a, a broken belt there. There's probably a good reason for it, though. I'm not going to go in and just drop one in there. Uh, so previously, we have the system. We have the system down here that's taking in the uh, the Vita Melange core chunks, turning them into crushed Vita, which is or uh, which is then cooked in turned into Vita Bloom, which is cooked into Vita Roast. No, I don't know what the Vita Roast is. Maybe that's a 0.5 thing. Then turned into maybe this is the Vita Roast. No, it's Vita Spice. So producing a, a Quantity of Vita Spice that's then being shipped off to be turned into um, in, 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 into some of the science, some of the bioscience. But we're also processing that again to turn it into the refined um, the refined Vita Melange, and that's being brought round here uh, into here. Uh, well, over here we're putting some of it into a rocket, which I, as previously mentioned, I disapprove of, but I do kind of understand why he's done that uh, because you can't you can't delivery can on it. Then some of it is also being brought over here where it's being turned into vitalic acid, which is another thing that requires rare metals and various other things. Um, and the vitalic acid recipe is is kind of expensive. Uh, so let's let's run into FNEI for a moment and have a look at, so the, the vitalic acid you do need in a small quantities, you, you do need in certain quantities, but also you need the bio scrubbers, these things. And if you look at this, to make one bio scrubber requires 30 vitalic acid, which is, that's not too bad. I mean, liquids tend to be quite large numbers because they're, they're fairly, chunky, for want of a better word. But to make 30 vitalic acids requires one vitamin lange extract to make two. So make 30 of them will require 15. So that's a fifth, essentially a 15 to 1 between the vitamin lange extracts and the, and the, and the scrubbers. Um, and so that's why he definitely wants to be doing this on over on this planet so we're not shipping massive, massive quantities of the, um, of the extract or the even worse, shipping massive quantities of the of, of, of the spice over because the spice to extract recipe is about well it takes it uses up 10 spice and produces somewhere in the region of five extract because you get 20 of them back i think i touched on this last week um so you're gonna yeah you're looking at turning uh, it, uh there's a two to one there and then there's a 15 to one over here going via the vitalic acid to make the actual bio scrubbers so yeah before the logistical sanity it definitely makes a lot more sense to do this over here these are then being passed. Well, this is then being passed along a belt along here, and there's another, and there's a pipe taking the uh, the vitalic acid in the same sort of direction. That comes over to here, where he's got. <laughs> oh dear. So this, this is horrible for all kinds of reasons. So for one thing, we're shipping stuff by rocket, which we've been trying to avoid, but yeah, the biological stuff it's somewhat unavoidable and a bit difficult because of the sort of the quantities and volumes required sending sending it over by delivery cannon is a bit of a, a bit tricky but then to make it worse he's putting the vitalic acid in barrels and putting them into the rocket uh, he's putting the uh, and putting the bio scrubbers in the rocket as well that's that's slightly less bad but then and he's also requesting all the bits of the rock rock for the rocket with blue chests as well which is also naughty so yeah this is all a bit gross but hopefully it's going to be very very temporary in within the next few streams. I don't want to say in the next stream because I don't think it's going to be then, but in the next sort of two or three streams, hopefully we'll start to get spaceships up and running, and then we can have either three spaceships plying the route between Big Rid and, um, and, Nor and Norbit, bringing the uh, the uh, the spice, the extract, the acid, and the scrubbers. Let's make that four spaceships. Um, it's a bit getting a bit uh, Spanish Inquisition in here. Or possibly we'll have one spaceship that handles all of them and just brings them all over in some sort of sushi form. We shall see what we feel, which we feel is the better way of doing it. But at the moment, we're yeah, it's, it's a little bit gross with the uh, with the barrels full of, um, of vitalic acid, especially because the the, ma the main reason I object to this is because you don't get all that much in a rocket because uh, and you have to spend quite a lot of steel as well. The steel isn't so much of the problem, but it's it's the fact that you only get 5,000 uh, barrels in a rocket. Uh, it just feels like it's, it's not that much stuff. So, but yeah, right now, I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. He's also put in some more water pumps to keep everything ha uh, to keep everything uh, properly properly hydrated. And um, apparently put in some more delivery cannons to take excess uh, core fragments over to Nor uh, off to Norvis because uh, apparently there's an excess of them. Now, right, right now, right now, 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 this second, there isn't. It seems to be, it seems to be okay. But I suspect it's because so much of the uh, of the of the stuff that's being produced is being taken away by rocket with these three rockets 
that we're not getting through the delivery cannon capsules quite as fast as you'd expect from the way these get the game normally runs. And so there's been a bit of an overflow of, um, of core fragments, so this is a system down here just to, just to get rid of them. It'll throw them at Norvis, and then on Norvis we can process them down into all of the resources and everything gets used from there. And so that brings us to the end of this of the um, of the construction from this episode. So as I was saying yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about the space elevator. That was the big, new, exciting thing in the last stream. And to be fair, Mark has done a lot of um, a lot of bio and uh, bioscience, and uh, Mike has, spent, has, produced, has advanced a long way with the um, uh, with with the material science. So yeah, there has there, there's been other stuff going on, but I talked about all of that yesterday. Now, I am going to go in and talk about researches because, as I, as I said last week, it's been something that I was asked to do in a video, and it seems like a good idea, not, and not least because it means I will actually remember to, um, uh, to, 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 to take note of what has been done. So, in the last, um, in the last stream, we researched bioscrubbers. Can I, can I even find them in here? Yes, here, there, here we go. Here are the bioscrubbers. These are, these are basically an ingredient for other things. So you need them for, um, I think it's biological three, might be biological two. No, it's biological two because it's a, if you look over here, it's a prereq for bio, bioscience two. Um, and I think they're also used in, in a handful of other constructions as well. Um, because we've got biological sciences up and running now, we're able to make productivity module five, so that's going to be good. We're going to want to certainly want to make some of those as quickly as possible and put them in our uh, in our science labs, get that up and running um, a bit more efficiently, and then maybe start to think about upgrading our um, modules in some of the machines. Thing is, these are going to be expensive, so you can see they take they take fifty bio scrubbers, so that's um, already well. I said it was fifteen um, fifteen vita extract, so um, thirty. Vita Spice, which means that's going to be about one and a half thousand Vita, uh, Vita Spice to make each one of these productivity modules. That's that's expensive when you think about it that way. Um, very very expensive. Uh, you need two productivity modules for for module fours, which aren't exactly going to be cheap either. And and a biological catalog. I feel like the bio, bio catalog might be the cheapest part of this entire of, of the entire build. If we look back at the fours as well, we can see they require they require one hundred and twenty Vita extract. So again, that's that, that's quite a lot. And um, machine learning data is not so much of a problem. And then the the, the, the the module threes again, not so much of a problem, except that they do require 50 vulcanite. Vulcanite is mostly a solved problem now, but if we start trying to make tier 5 productivity modules, we might find that we get through rather a lot of it. Because with it being two for each, it's 50, yes, okay, it's only 50 to make one of these, but that means it's 100 to make one of these, and 200 to make one of these. And when I put it like that, it doesn't feel quite so bad, because we've gone, because with uh, the new version, it's only, it only doubles for each, each tier of uh, module, rather than uh, tripling like it did in 0.5. 200 vulcanite to make one of these, it's a lot, but it's not quite quite so horrific. Maybe that can wait until we have spaceships uh, spaceships full coming in, rather than having rather than saying, "Well, that'll be four delivery cannon capsules, please." <laughs> We've also um, researched the bio gun. There it is. That one. That's that's the one that fires out those big green sneeze things that destroy everything in their area. And in theory, will make bi um, biters have the sort of the chain reaction problem. Um, it's not enormously effective, as I've demonstrated in the past. Um, uh, we've, I say we've just researched it now. We have the one that we found free in the in the abandoned spaceship, so that's why I've been able to use it. But now we can actually make more ammunition for it if, if we want to, and also make a pheromone dart as well. I I. I Okay, so that uh, that if we start firing those at the big biters, then we could get them to sort of start have do a bit of infighting, and um, maybe they'll deal with each other themselves. That could be quite nice. Uh, ele space elevators, of course. I've talked endlessly about that, so I'm not going to mention it anymore, apart from to say that yes, we we uh, researched that. We've got energy catalog fours research now, so this means Tristan can start um, work on building up bu building up those catalogs. So that's quite exciting. And we've done all of the quote unquote tier one bio attribute upgrades. So that's these things along here. So we've got an agility upgrade, which increases your movement speed. We've got the um, health bonus. What's it got? Oh, constitution, which gives you an extra 50 health points. Could be useful. Uh, the dexterity, which gives you a little bit of boost to pocket crafting speed. Not so important. We don't do very much pocket crafting, but you know, won't, 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 won't complain about it. And also the strength upgrade, which increases the size of your, um, inventory, your inventory a little bit. Um, oh, and there's another one down here. Intelligence, which increases your uh, research productivity by uh, by 5%. So that's rather nice because again, it's another another boost to the amount of uh, research we can do with each, with each, uh, each science pack we make. We've researched Material Science 3, so that's down here, that allows Mike to start building, the, actually building those science packs. And we can then start working on uh, researches that require Material 3, so that's good. And Bio 2, very, very similar, it's going to be tucked up, up here, here we go. Um, we've turned, got an anti-creep virus capsule, what's that? It sounds like a biological thing, so it's probably going to be up here somewhere. Ah, here it is. What does that do? It contains a powerful virus, permanently killing all biter creep and preventing more from generating. Okay, so it's it's a thing you can use to get rid of um, get rid of biter creep that's um, generated over 
over an area. And also damages bite, regresses biters into a less dangerous form. Interesting. I'm not sure how that's used. Oh, I see. It's a poison capsule. So it's something you actually throw from the player at the biters. So it'll get rid of the creep and prevent more from generating and also and also regresses the biters in an area. So you can use it essentially as a weapon. If you're going to go in and attack some biters, you can throw that in there. And presumably that means it turns the big green ones into merely large blue ones. So that, that, could, that sounds quite nice and could be useful if we're doing any sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat in the future. Intelligence. Oh, we've done intelligence one and intelligence two. I didn't mention. I didn't mention this. This. This is. This is the second tier of it. So we've done both tier one and tier two. So that's another. Another boost to the. Um, the upgrade there, and we are currently researching the advanced chemical plant. And this, um, is a basically it's a more powerful version of the normal chemical plant. I believe it's significant, much much faster. So you don't need as many of the machines. Um, and I think it allows you to put more modules in it. So we're going to be able to get better and better productivity bon bonuses out of this one. Um, the only downside of it is that it requires rather a lot of stuff to make, as you can see there, uh, with the immersion beams and gears and pipes and metals. There's a lot that goes into that. But um, it's probably going to be worth it, at least for things that are high demand, high throughput, just generally require lots and lots of stuff. So that's the uh, that's the end of the research. That's that's everything we managed to get, we managed to think very hard about last time. There are no deaths to report on. I think that's probably good news. It is it certainly is from our point of view, but it might be less exciting for you guys. Um, things went, but thing yeah, things went quite well. No no deaths in the last session. So come along next time. Where there will be no streams next week because as as I mentioned yesterday, I'm, it is going to be show week. So therefore, I shall be in the theatre every evening all week um, performing. So come along, come along and see the show if you're in the south of the UK. That would be uh, that would be great. If I can get every, if I can get everybody who subscribed to my channel to come and see the show, then I think we break all records we've ever 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 set before. Unfortunately, I'm fully aware that quite a lot of you are in other countries. So yeah, no Monday night stream, no Wednesday night stream. There will be a video on Tuesday, and there'll be different ones for supporters and non-supporters as usual. Um, and then I'm going to get a, a sort of a summary of series two video coming out at the end of the, at the end of the week. So there will be a factor, some Factorio content then. And then the week after, we will start off with the first stream of series three, and normal service will be resumed at least for that week. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you thank you very much for watching. Uh, please check out the stream sponsor, that's trefoil.be, and use the code LawrencePlays to get 20% uh, off your first month. And also, thank, I should say thank you to Alexander for um, for uh, donating a new microphone to the channel, which is uh, hopefully allows you to hear my uh, my voice much more clearly and um, at, at a much higher quality. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next time, and goodbye.